All right, this is lesson 3.11 in our pre-calc 12 class. The unit is called exponential and logarithmic functions. Lesson 11 is called solving log equations round two. So what we're gonna learn in this lesson is that, um, um, how do we get extraneous solutions with log equations and how to identify them in our solutions? Yes, extraneous solutions, they're back. So when I solve a, uh, a log equation, the, the procedure we did was um, to get the x out of the log equation, we turned it into an exponential equation. And so if you know, if you remember back to what the graphs of the log equation and the exponential equation look like graphically, um, the, the log equation had some domain restrictions. We had a vertical asymptote and uh, our x values lie either on one side or the other. But the domain of an exponential function is all real numbers. So because the domain of the exponential function, so when we turn it into an exponential function here in green, the domain could be all real numbers for this guy. So any x value would be a solution. However, um, the domain is restricted for our original log function. We can't be, we can't be, um, taking a log of anything zero or less than zero. So we could potentially have an extraneous solution in this situation. So what we've got to do to check for those extraneous solutions is we've got to make sure that what we're taking a log of is never equal or is never less than zero. It's never equal to zero. It's only greater than zero. Um, so remember like there's nothing like four to the power of of no real number will get us to zero. And certainly four to the power of no number would get us a negative number. So that, that's kind of the intuition there. So um, what I'm going to do is set up my domain restrictions for my logs. One restriction is that 3x minus 4 has to be greater than 0. And so I write that right here. We solve for x. We get x has to be greater than 4 thirds. If x is equal to 4 thirds, then this is going to be equal to 0. And if x is less than 4 thirds, this is going to be a negative. So we don't want that. Um, the other log function gives us another domain restriction. x plus 3 has to be greater than 0. Well, that means x has to be greater than negative 3. So for a problem, a solution to be the right solution, it has to meet both of these requirements of our domain restriction. Um, and these two domain restrictions, the one on the left um, is more restrictive than the one on the right. So if a number is greater than four thirds, it's also always going to be greater than negative three. So, so for this problem in particular, we're just going to look at a domain restriction of four over three. All right. So now let's look about how to get uh, possible solutions. Um, so we're going to take this thing. We have a, our product rule: um, log base four of three x minus four plus log base four of x plus three equals two. We can um, combine these into one log by multiplying the 3x minus 4 times the x plus 3. And so we're going to have to do some algebra here. We can FOIL this out. Let's see, I like to use my box method here for FOILing. Um, 3x minus 4 times x plus 3 is going to be 3x squared plus 5x minus 12. So I'll make my log base 4 of that equals 2. And then we're going to write our log function with a single log as an exponential function. So 4 to the power of 2 is equal to this quadratic, which is 16 is equal to that quadratic. And if I subtract 16 on, from each side, so I can set this thing equal to 0, I'm going to get um, 0 equals 3x squared plus 5x minus 28. And so remember from our algebra, what we're doing is we're, we're setting this thing equal to 0 so that we can factor this guy. If I can factor this quadratic, then I can find two zeros from that. So to factor this quadratic, I am going to go back to my box method. I know 3x squared and negative 20 are in the box. And I could do a little bit of puzzling to figure out that 4x plus 4 and 3x minus 7 are my factors. Uh, if you don't know box method, um, I recommend you learn it or ask me about it. Ask me about box method. Okay, cool. So when we factor this thing, we can see that um, for this uh, binomial product to equal 
0. Either x plus 4 is equal to 0 or 3x minus 7 is equal to 0. And so that means that if x plus 4 equals 0, x would be negative 4. And if 3x minus 7 equals 0, x would be 7 over 3. Remember, that's add 7 over and then divide both sides by 3. Okay, so we have two potential answers. So now what we're going to do is we're going to double check our domain restriction. So x has to be greater than 4 thirds. Well, uh, 7 thirds is definitely greater than 4 thirds. So that one's going to be okay. But negative 4 is less than 4 thirds. So this, this solution is not in our domain for our original function. So we're going to omit it from our answer. It is an extraneous solution. Okay, here's another example. Um, the, the solving for x is pretty routine. We're going to write this using quotient rule. The first log divided by the second. And then to get this out of the x out of the log function, we're going to write it as an exponential. 6 to the power of 1 equals 4x squared minus 7 over 4x plus 1. I'm going to multiply both sides by 4x plus 1. Distribute the 6. And then I'm going to push everything over to the right side, set it equal to 0. I'm going to factor this quadratic using my box method. It's not as hard as it looks, because that 13 is prime. And we're going to get two solutions. So x could be negative 1 over 2, and x could be 13 over 2. So now if we look at our domain restrictions, 4x squared minus 7 has to be greater than 0, and 4x plus 1 has to be greater than 0. So in this case, we are going to have to consider both domain restrictions for each of our answers. And for these answers to pass the test and not be extraneous, the answer has to be um, sufficiently, or has to be sufficient for each of the domain restrictions. Okay, so if 4x minus 7 is greater than 0, that means x squared has to be greater than 7 over 4. Now, all of the algebra machines out there, hold your horses, I know you want to square root both sides. But if we square root an x squared, that that's going to change the domain of, of, of what this gives us. And we don't want to change the domain. We want to know the domain of the original function. So if I, if I, if I square root both of these sides, I'm going to get uh, a new domain of a new function. I don't want that. So we're going to leave this as x squared has to be greater than 7 fourths. OK, and so if, if our x plus 1 is greater than 0, that means x has to be greater than negative 1 over 4. OK, so um, we could break this out um, a little bit, but um, that's not really the point of this lesson. So we're just going to leave this nice and simple. x squared is greater than 7 fourths, and x is greater than negative 1 fourth. OK, so um, 13 over 2, if I square it, it's going to be 169 over 4. 169 is way bigger than 7. So like, uh, thinking back to my grade 2 math teacher, my grade 2 teacher taught us that the alligator likes to eat the bigger number. So this alligator would be a fool to go for 7 over 169. Um, thank you, Mrs. McClellan, if you're listening. I know you're not, but, you know, a guy can dream. Anyways, um, yeah, so 13 over 2 is fits this domain restriction, and it also is definitely greater than negative 1 fourth. So we accept 13 over 2. Negative 1 over 2, if I square it, it's 1 over 4, positive. And um, 1 over 4 is not greater than 7 over 4. This is a false statement. So. Um, 1 over 4 is less than 7 over 4. So that means it's not in the domain for this first log. So for that reason alone, we're going to omit negative 1 over 2. It also doesn't fall into the domain of the other answer, because negative 1 fourth is greater than negative 1 half. So we omit that for both, um, for both domains. It doesn't work. All right, take away. So by rewriting a log function into an exponential function, we can create extraneous solutions because um, exponential functions domain is all real numbers, but logs uh, log functions domain is less than that. 
So we do have to check for extraneous solutions. Um, if we have a good understanding of domain, then it's really um, a much simpler process. If you didn't understand domain, then what you'd have to do is you'd have to go back and just plug in, just plug in these numbers into your log function until you get something that doesn't make sense. And then you have to interpret that answer. Um, that is more work. It does work, but it is more work. Um, it'll be easy, better you're off just uh, knowing your domains.